Today's video is going to be a little bit different. There's some big changes coming on with what I'm going to be doing. And I wanted to share them with you. So I'm going to take you for a walk out by my pond and we'll sit down and I'm going to tell you kind of some of the stuff that's going on. So seven years ago, this didn't exist. It was a wheat field. And in that time, we spent a lot of time, effort, and money. And it's still in baby phases. You can see like our mistletoe is kind of halfway growing, but we've built a little area. And we have a pond that, I don't know, it's probably right out of acre. And we built restrooms out here and I mean, we've planted trees and blueberry bushes and blackberry bushes and grapes and a little bit of everything like that. We've got a place where basically our kids can come out and we can kayak and we can do stuff. And it is our little oasis. The pond is about 20 foot deep at the deepest and it's got shallow areas and ledges and banks. And it kind of goes around about like that. So I come out to my pond pretty much every day. I've been tying flies all morning and my shoulders get kind of sore. I got some stuff going on in my shoulder. I don't really know. The other day when I fell in the water and almost drowned, man, my shoulder has not been right since. So doctors got me on some steroids and it's kind of helping, but that doing this tying, it hurts. So this morning I took a break for fly tying. I thought, well, I'm gonna come out and feed the fish and. I thought, well, I'm out here. I'm going to talk to you guys about some huge changes that I've decided to do this year with the fly tying channel, with my fly tying business, with everything in general, with I've got bugs in general. So this last year, I started a, a fly fishing club for some homeschool kids. My daughter, we decided to homeschool her to give her some more one-on-one -on -one attention to get her kind of better educated than what, what we were able to get in the public school system not a political thing there she has an issue and it took extra work it takes a lot of one-on-one -on -one, so we had to work through that and these kids i learned that are in the homeschool they don't have anything to, like there's no extracurricular stuff it's very limited so i decided to start this homeschool club you guys have heard about it a little bit it has exploded i live in southwest oklahoma literally this last year there was a kid in oklahoma who wanted to catch a fish in every county in oklahoma and I was the only place in Oklahoma, in, in the county that I live in, in Jackson County, Oklahoma, that had water. Um, the reservoir that had drained, the, the, we were in such a drought. Now we've had like nine inches of rain in the last month, but this was literally the only place that had water. So, you know, it, it was just kind of crazy to think that this little fly fishing club in a county that has literally hardly any water whatsoever to go fish for trout, it's, uh, the minimum to fish for some stalker trout is an hour and a half and then you're three to five hours out to fish You know anywhere that's gonna have like creeks and streams and stuff like that So to have that here, it was kind of crazy, but it's become probably the greatest thing I've ever been a part of I absolutely the fishing club is my favorite thing that I have ever been a part of We have a lot of fun We tie one week and then the kids get to fish and they come out here and they fish and it's just been a lot of fun and with that it kind of brought like this idea to me I have a room in my house. It's like a 15 foot by 18 foot room. That's my fly tying room. And yeah, I've outgrown it. Um, but when I do fly tying club meetings, we can't tie in my house. I don't have enough places for all the kids to sit down. I don't, you know, plus I don't want a bunch of kids just running around in my house and knocking paintings off the wall and stuff like that. So I've decided this year that we're going to do some changes and I'm actually going to build me a fly tying studio on the north end of my pond. I'll walk you guys through there and kind of show you here in a little bit. And with that, my pond's about an acre, not completely the whole acre width, but it's pretty close to an acre and it's kind of peanut shaped. There's a smaller shallower end that's got a bridge that crosses and then there's this bigger end and over here in this bigger end, I've got an island and in between there, it's like a 20 foot deep hole. And so it stays really cold. Like I keep trout in here. Um, I just literally got some stocked and there's another delivery coming next week and the trout they'll survive almost I don't know June uh, Depending how hot it gets, you know, we get pretty hot here in Oklahoma But the bottom of that pond stays pretty cold and then I keep well water running into it all the time That's constant 62 63 degrees. So the the water we can keep trout a lot longer than normal and when they get close to the time where they're not gonna make it We harvest them out my wife eats fish. So so she eats them so with that said, what we're going to do is, I've got like some big rocks here and on the different areas of the pond that we use for casting stations. Well, I'm going to build a fly shop on the north side over there that you can walk right out to, to the island. Now, it's not going to be like a competitive fly shop trying to compete with all the, you know, different people who do business and that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a place where I can 
do the classes for the kids. You know, and the classes for the kids are free. I don't charge them anything. Literally, the channel pays for all of it. Um, you guys that have watched and supported the channel are the ones who've actually supplied everything for these kids. We've had a few donations, and then other than that, the channel is where, where we do it all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it set up to where I can have a place with all the fly time materials or when we do classes they can come and we have every single thing that anybody could possibly want and then if people want like one-on-one -on -one fishing lessons and stuff they can come out here by appointment type only and we can get whatever and then I'll have very basic fly fishing needs um, I've got in the last year I've taught over 200 people in this area some fly fishing stuff or I've had people come in and help and it's becoming a lot more popular than you would think so there's you know different fishing places you know an hour or so from here and people are starting to fly fish it but there's nowhere you have to go three hours to get the closest fly time materials that you can get around here so I'll keep some basic tippets leaders stuff like that but it's going to be more of like an education sharing type facility and then if people want to learn how to fly tie I'll do one-on-one -on -one classes, stuff like that. If they're wanting to learn how to cast, do stuff, they can come out here, they can tie their flies, they can come out here and actually fish. And then I'll probably do some by appointment only, let families come out here with their kids. When I was a little kid, I grew up in Colorado and they used to have stalker ponds, and I'm sure they still do. And you could pay by the pound to go fish. Well, I'm gonna, this will be catching early, so I'm not gonna let people take my fish. Matter of fact, I need to feed them again. Um, so I'm going to, you know, make it to where people can come out here, spend time with their family in a very safe, confined environment that's not got riffraff. You know, we can really keep that kind of stuff out. And they can have a good experience with their kids if their kids want to go out and catch a fish. Because if you go to just a random lake with your kids fishing, around here the chances that you're going to catch something is pretty slim. So here I can guarantee they can catch fish. I mean, there's it's, it's ridiculous the amount of fish that I have in here. So that's one level of the thing. With the other part... I said I live on a homestead, um, you know, several years ago when me and my dad decided that we were going to do this before he passed away, he, I, I live across the street from where my parents raised me. So basically, I, me and my dad, we were going to do this homestead deal when I retired, kind of got sick of dealing with people being in law enforcement, and we were going to start raising all our own food and doing all that. And those of you who have followed my channel for very long know that my channel started out as a homesteading channel. And my passion is kind of fly fishing, and I didn't really want to get all personal about how we live our day-to-day -day lives. So now, through a lot of thinking, I'm not going to get into homesteading and showing you guys how to do this or how to do that. But what I am doing is this year we are going to start raising a lot of fly tying materials. And everything that I raise here, we raise their food, so there's no chemicals put in anything. So when I'm tying, you know, last year I tied a bunch of bucktails. Um, crappie jigs and when I got done my fingers were just solid whatever color of the material was and it really made me think how much chemicals go through these feathers and materials that we get that's really unnecessary so I'm gonna start raising uh, tons of different hackle it's not uh, we probably aren't gonna have the whiting quality of hackle but we'll have some good quality hackle I know this because I've raised some for myself this last year and it's doable um, I'm working with the state right now getting all my licenses done but we're gonna have some flight fins out here and we're gonna have pheasants uh different different kinds of pheasants quail uh some some different kind of partridges to where we'll be able to get all those kinds of feathers that will all be natural organic chemical free uh 100 you know raised here and it's a small operation our place is eight acres it was basically two city blocks and when we bought it it was barren there was nothing here and in the last seven years, I've planted, I counted them the other day with 347 trees we've planted here. Totally looking different. Here's a picture of what it looked like. So now that we've got it all growing, we're going to keep adding to the landscape and doing stuff like that. But I'm going to start raising a bunch of organic fly tying material. And I thought telling you guys what I'm doing, it would kind of be neat for you guys to see how it all took place and how it all goes down. So as we're building the fly shop, if you guys have ideas, and like I say, this isn't going to be an open for the public 24-7 deal. I may open like one day a week and then everything else will be by appointment only. 
I, I'm not 100% sure because the licenses cost. I don't know that it'd be lucrative or profitable to do it, but I may end up getting uh, like a minnow tank and keeping live bait, depending if we can get the economics to where it actually works. So all the people that are around here who want bait can get it because I think it's an hour to a bait shop, maybe more. You know, it's just really hard, you know, other than going to like Walmart, you're not going to be able to get a lot of, you know, fishing tackle and you're dang sure aren't going to find anything fly fishing for around here. But with that said, I, I've, my merchandise has took off. People are buying a lot of t-shirts and hats and uh, we're adding to the fly shop. Um, the the website, I have, I think we've got 238 fly patterns that we're going to be uploading this week. So we'll start selling flies online, fly boxes online. We have tons of t-shirts, um, hats. Here's our first organic problem, pro bleh, product, I can't even talk today. It's called Sappy Wax. And what this is, is it's beeswax that we raised right here. We have our own bees, again, chemical free. And then I, I got some pine trees that I started peeling sap from. And I figured out a pretty decent ratio to uh, very similar to like the old cobbler waxes without all the charcoal and the black staining that gets that sticky, 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 sticky wax. And this stuff, I mean, it's so sticky. I tried to sell some in chapstick tubes and I literally had to refund people their money because I couldn't get the chapstick tubes to turn. It was so sticky that it, it locked everything down. It's the stickiest oven wax I've ever used and we've got it up on the website. It's called Sappy Wax. But we're gonna have that. As it is right now, we have turkeys, we're adding peacocks, we're adding pheasants and quail. We have tons of chickens, we have ducks, we have sheep, so I'll have a bunch of all natural wool dubbings. Um, we're working on a ton of different things. So this next year, throughout the year, hopefully by summertime we get it all done, we're gonna turn this thing into something hopefully spectacular. On the other side of that, I live right by an Air Force base, and not only do I do a lot of stuff with uh, the homeschool kids, but I also do a lot of stuff with the military. There's a lot of guys who come in, we have a training base, and they come in and they're from somewhere else, and they get down here, and it's a small town with not a lot to do. You know, we don't have, there, there's just really not a lot to do for it. So these guys that come down here, they're starving for something to do, and if a guy's willing to give him, you know, himself to the, or our gal, to our country, uh, to serve our country, I think we kind of owe them something as well. So a lot of times I'll meet these airmen and I've built up a pretty good relationship with it and they'll come and, you know, we'll go, you know, I'll introduce them to fishing areas around here that, you know, are somewhat close to where they can go fishing. Or I've allowed some to come here and they'll eat dinner with us and, you know, we'll go fishing and stuff like that. So on top of all of what I'm trying to do on the other end of our pond, I'm going to build like a neat log cabin, A-frame type bed and breakfast, just a little one room, self-efficient type little room. So if these airmen are down for just a weekend or so here and there and they want a place to stay, instead of renting a motel like they do in, in the town, they can come out here and rent a place and have access to our ponds and stuff like that. If people want to come fish here and, you know, take some fly tying lessons and stuff like that, literally there's nothing in our town. A mile away there's a small gas station and we have a post office and that is it. There's nothing in our town. So the town, I think there's 27 houses here, little bitty place. In so there's really, there's not, you know, there's just not a lot around. And in the Altus, the town that's next to us, there's still minimal. They're, the city's doing amazing stuff to make it better. But for people who want to get away from everything, I thought it would be really neat. When you get out here, the light in this town is amazing. At nighttime, it's completely pitch black. So you can see all the stars in the sky. And it's just a really, really neat place um, to, to do what we're going to try to do. So we are going to add, like I say, in this next year, a little bed and breakfast other place for the fly fishing stuff and tons and tons and tons of animal husbandry stuff to where we can start raising fly time materials that are chemical free and safe so with that being said any ideas any comments suggestions pictures stuff like that please comment message let me know ideas because i want to make this the best that i possibly can i'm also going to have um, I've got a professional photographer who's been really working with me and I had to take a pause on it because of my stupid near drowning incident. I was beat down for about a week and a half over that, but we've got a bunch of where I'll be doing like a, you know, fly fishing videos a whole lot more often. And in this building, we're going to set up a studio that is just for that, where I don't have to move the cameras. I don't have adjust stuff to where I can get back to my bench and die. We're actually going to have a fly time bench to where I can make a bunch of just video stuff where it's 100 percent set up all the time it's where i can go in there and try to keep a lot of constant fly tying content going on not only will it help you know teach people about fly fishing but it will make me better at what i'm doing because i'll be able to practice more and the feedback from you guys has been amazing so 
I wanted to share that with you and I'm gonna kind of walk you around and show you a little bit of where it's all gonna take place. So down our driveway, our front yard, you can kind of see we've got a bunch of orchard that we've planted. And then behind here, it's all grass. I've left a big enough area to where we can do fly casting to where they can get out and practice casting here and there. And you can see it's not completely well groomed out there because in the tree area, that 500 foot down, we don't let grass grow there. Uh, we've literally planted like 20 something pounds of wildflower seeds. So in the summertime, that thing is just going to be nothing but a big wildflower patch, which will look pretty awesome as well. So right here is where our fly shop studio is going to be. And basically, right here there's a, a big hill that goes by the pond. And around it, I have an area here that is about 40 foot square that we're going to try to build cool A-frame looking deal. The dock will go back through here and attach to the island. Right here, we're building a permaculture food forest. So this, it'll take a little bit for it to all come to life. But there's 30 something fruit trees right here. We're gonna put a big pergola out here. It'll all be landscape vines completely surrounding it. So it'll be another area that people can kind of sit around, visit, hang out. So between, from this end to the other end of the pond, it, it, it'll be a little bit, somewhere in about a thousand foot range by about 700 foot big cube of just completely landscaped, uh, shaded areas where people can hang out and play and I am kind of a hippie we are all solar not only are we solar but I actually have the largest solar battery system in Oklahoma for a residence um, we're completely I have a 3,000 square foot two-story house it's 100% ran on solar so everything that we're doing it's green and it's natural now I'm not that far out there on that but for me I wanted to know what my bills were gonna be the rest of my life, so I eliminated them. And I made it to where everything that I have is mine, and then I don't have to worry about when I get old and my income goes down that I don't have things. So anyhow, that's kind of what's going on. I'm gonna show you kind of our chickens and stuff and show you what the big goal is, and I hope that you guys are willing to watch this. I'm not gonna bombard the channel with this stuff, but probably once a week I'll show an update of the progress of what we got going on. Well, that's kind of the introduction of what's going to take place this year. I appreciate you guys and your support. I hope this doesn't scare everybody off, you know, people who aren't interested in this side of it. But you guys helped get it here, so I thought it'd be nice to share with, with you guys kind of the progress and what's going on. So with that said, the videos that I do this way, I'll make sure they're clearly labeled what they are. So if you're just wanting fly tying or material stuff, you don't have to watch it. But if it is something you watch, please kind of help spread the word about it um check out our website i've got bugs.com we are adding literally hundreds of things over the next few weeks um, we've got tons of new t-shirts hoodies uh fishing shirts sun shirts hats beanies koozies flies you name it we're, we're really getting in on that so if you guys would go to the channel like the page subscribe share it go to the web page if you guys buy merch it sure helps like i say it's funding the homeschool kids thing and now we're going to take it and we're going to start building this stuff little by little as we can so thank you guys for everything it's really been fun see you in the next video